What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Hayden and today we're going to go over a pretty important topic. This is something that comes up a lot. It's something that I actually spend a lot of time thinking about and I think it's really important to break this down in a non-biased way, just being completely honest without hurting other people's feelings. The more popular Turo is getting, the more videos are coming out, the more gurus are popping up and I think it's important to talk the real. Should you rent out your car or rent out your house? I don't think that's so much the question, but should you invest in purchasing a residence to rent out or should you purchase cars to rent them out? So let's break it down. Now, first off, I make my living in mostly real estate. The reason that I am using Turo, well, I'll link the video here, was it kind of started by accident. Uh, we were traveling for a couple months. I'm making car payments. I thought I wish there was some way I could get one of these car rental places to take the payment off my hands just for these few months. Discovered Turo. One thing led to another and I realized, look, I work from home. This is very minimal work for what I need to do. Um, if I could have my car payment made and make some money on top of it, why wouldn't I do it? And I still stand by that. I think that's what Turo is though. I don't believe for most people Turo is the inspiration and the go ahead to take out $100,000 of auto debt, rent your cars out, pay over the car payments, and make an extra few hundred dollars on top of that. Now, I know it's a bit of a contradiction, but there are people doing that and making six figures and seven figures. But what nobody is telling you is how much money they're making selling the car. See, what a lot of people are now doing is having a dealer's license, going out purchasing a car wholesale, listing it up for the fair market value so they can make two or three thousand dollars i know it varies per car on that vehicle while in the meantime of trying to find an online buyer they rent it out on turo instead of it sitting on a lot and, and there's nothing wrong with that i think that's a solid business model um i just think it needs to be, needs to be more transparent instead of you saying hey listen go take out you know a hundred thousand dollars of auto debt to buy a depreciating asset that's going to make you all this money long term i don't see it being long term while is if you would have taken that same $100,000 of debt and instead of getting, you know, an auto loan for 60 or 72 months, you get a mortgage, you know, 15 to 30 years, you now have an appreciating asset, you have equity that is building up, giving you more value, that you're able to take more money out of that, purchase another property and continue going forward. While as a car, for the most part, they're gonna depreciate. Now with depreciation, that's not necessarily a bad thing. One of the greatest things I found about Turo is that's gonna help me a lot in the long run as far as my taxes go. And the reason being is I'm able to now depreciate those cars to $0 over a certain length of time. So for example, if you bought a car for $40,000 and you're going to sell that car in two years, you can depreciate it to the difference of what you're going to sell the, the car at off of your taxes. So there is definitely a tax incentive, but depreciation is still depreciation. It's not fun. Another reason you should put your money into purchasing a property to rent out opposed to a car is the liability. You have insurance on both ends of this with renting out your car on Turo, along with rent renting out your home. Even if you did it through Airbnb, you're insured. But the difference is you're far more likely to have a liability claim against you with a car because of the liability. You're more likely to be, have somebody injured or be in an accident or lose the asset because it's a car. And don't take this that I'm just crapping on Turo because I am not. I use Turo. I'm gonna continue using Turo. And I have a lot of problems and complaints with Turo that I've been extremely open about, both on this channel and with Turo directly. But how I see Turo is a great way to utilize an extra small source of income. In addition to that, I think it's a great way to be able to go buy a different car, something you really enjoy, you want to have, and you wouldn't mind paying for with or without Turo, but having in the back of your mind, hey, I can at least have my car payment covered. So for example, right now I have two cars. I'm looking at purchasing another car because why not? These ones are paying for themselves. I've doubled my money on one car within 12 months and the car I want to get is something I've always wanted, a Range Rover. Yes, that's what I want. So I probably would not be in a position to have three cars at such a high value without having Turo already there. So I think it's really good for that, getting something you're going to enjoy and not having in the back of your mind, oh my gosh, look at all these car payments. It's something you can't let get out of control. Just like if you watch my credit card videos, 
I'm all about as many lines of credit as you can have, as long as you can properly manage it, which is kind of life in general. But anyway, guys, if you're going to go out this weekend and purchase seven cars to put the Montero, hey, more power to you. I wish the best of luck to you. I didn't start this channel to, you know, give people a hard time for figuring out what they want to do for a living or their livelihood. So with that being said, my livelihood is not dependent on this channel but it would be nice. So if you could smash that like button for me, subscribe, drop a comment below, let me know what you think, and I'll see you next time.